Hello, it's Keith here and this is the first in a new series of simple videos in which we're going to look at a different platform each time. We're going to create a single assembly file to do an easy task that you're probably going to want to do if you're developing your own games. So this week we're going to be looking at the Amstrad CPC. We're going to learn how to create some simple sprites onto the screen. We're going to use the firmware to keep the code as short as possible. So let's see the code we're going to actually use today. So here's the first example. Now we're going to go over the code in just a moment, but first let's just execute it. So if I press F9 here, we get no errors. And then I go to here and do call a hexadecimal 1200 and hit enter. You can see we just had a little smiley face appear at the top of the screen there, just above the A of Parados. So that's the first example. We're just showing an 8x8 pixel bitmap here. That's a very simple example. So the first thing I think we want to look at is if you're not familiar with assembly at all and WinApe, then how do we actually load things? Well, you go to this assembler option here and show assembler. You would then load this file here or type it in. It, this file is going to be available for download from my website. So it's just CPC bitmap. It's a single file here and that will do everything for you. So let's go over the code now and have a look at what the lines of this code are actually doing and how this builds up our file. So first of all, we've got this line org1200 here. This is the start of the program. So if we change this to 1400 and recompile again, we would now have to do call hexadecimal 1400 here to get the code to work okay. So that's the start of our program in memory. When we compile with WinAPE, it automatically goes into the memory of the emulator. So we don't need to do any kind of loading of files, which is why I suggest WinAPE for Z80 programming if you're just learning. Now we're going to use a firmware function called screen.position and the memory address for that is bc1d. So we call this memory address and this memory address will return a HL address of a byte within the screen memory. So when we call this, we need to select a pixel location of the area we want to draw our character to. So we specify the X position in the register pair DE and the Y position in the register pair HL. So these are done in pixels. So if I change this to 20 here, which is, these are hexadecimal, so 20 is effectively 32. And I compile this again and I do the call again, 1200. You can see that the character has now moved along quite a bit there. And if I put an 8 in here and compile again, and do call hexadecimal 1200, you can see it's actually moved up here. Now that's because the Y position is from the bottom of the screen and the X position is from the left hand side of the screen. So we've moved up 8, effectively the full height of the tile there. So that's what we're doing there to select the starting location. So once we've got the starting location in HL, we're then going to use DE to point to our sprite data. And our sprite data is just here called test sprite. So I've defined it as byte data here, just as a simple way so that we can have this one file that does everything. And this is a smiley face effectively. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. But this is the address of the test sprite and there's eight lines in the test sprite. Now each line is two bytes. You can see these are these are done as lines here. So we need to copy two bytes from DE, the source of the sprite data, to HL, the screen location that we selected with this command here. So we read in from DE with, into the accumulator and then write the accumulator to HL here. And this is copying from the test sprite to the screen. And then we increase the memory address of the test sprite data and we increase the memory address of the screen memory here and then we do the second byte just here. So this is doing two bytes, effectively one line of this here. Now you'll notice we're pushing HL here and we're popping it back. If you're not familiar with any assembly yet, then this is how we back up and restore HL. So we are actually getting HL back to the state that it was here. And that is effectively the left hand side of our sprite. And the reason we're going to do that is we need to get to the following line below the first line of our sprite that we drew. And we've got a command within the firmware to do this. BC26, hexadecimal address, is called screen next line. And this will increase HL by the equivalent of one line. And we don't need to worry about how it works that out. It does it for us. And so what we're doing then is we are checking B, which we set just up here. We set it to eight. And that's the number of lines within our sprite because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines there. DJNZ says decrease B and jump if not zero and that will jump all the way back up to here and do the next line and it will keep repeating until we've done our sprite. So if we just do a clear screen here and if we change this to just four and now do 
or hexadecimal 1200. You can see now we've only got half of our sprite there, so that's why we've got that set to 8. Now, the format of the data here will depend on the screen mode. The example here is in mode 1, which is this 4 color mode. That's my preferred mode. There's mode 0, which is a 16 color mode. But in mode 1, the format works like this. So you can see here we've got a byte here, and that's one half of our line of the sprite. And the second byte is there, which is the other half. So this is the left hand side here. And you see we've got here 0011. Now, the smiley face, you can kind of see half of it in these ones just here. And the other half is in these ones just here. And so the smiley face, the, the, the sort of main shape of the face is in color one. The, the eyes and the mouth are in colors two and three though. And the way it works is this is effectively the first bit of the number. So this, this is effectively one, but then this is the second bit. So this is setting it up as two or three. So if there's a one here and a zero here, it'll be in color one. If there's a zero here and a one here, it'll be in color two. And if there's a one here and a one here, it'll be in color three. Now, if you don't understand this, I, I fully understand that. I'm going to show you a way that you can create your own sprites without worrying about this. But that's effectively how the bit data is transferred into screen memory. And because this is in screen format here. So if you want to have a play, you can just change these and just see what happens. For example, let's try that just now. Let's let, add an extra line here. And let's set all of these bit four bits to one here and all of these four bits to one here and we'll just call that so you can see here that these bits here have defined the left hand side of that top line as color one and these bits here have defined the right hand side of the sprite as color two well what happens if we set both so if I add another line here like this, and I set all four bits to one just here, if we compile this and run this again, you can see these are now, these bits here are red now, and that's color three here. So that's how we can select the colors. Now, of course, these are very simple examples, but as I say, you don't really need to know about this, and I'll show you just why in just a moment. So that's how we could do an eight by eight sprite. But what about if we want to do something a bit more substantial because we're likely to want to. Well, here's another example. This time we're importing our file, we're including a binary file and we've got a sprite called spritecpc.raw here. Now, where did this sprite come from? Well, I've got a little tool which you can get from my website. It's included in the sources file called AccuSprite Editor. And you can see the sample file here. This is my Chibico character. If we go to CPC file and save raw bitmap, that will output a file which is in the same format as we are using today. So you can actually create a sprites like this and not worry about how to export them in the correct format. And this program does work with mode one and it also works with 16 color mode zero as well. So that's how you can create your bitmaps without having to worry about how the actual pixel data needs to be to get onto the screen. So we'll have a look at this again in just a moment. So if I just compile it first and do call hexadecimal 1200 once again, and you can see now the colors are a bit odd, but we've got our Chibi Co character just there. So let's have a look at what's changed. Well, not too much has changed actually, quite surprisingly. So we've got our height in lines this time, but it's gone up to 48 because this is a 48 by 48 sprite. Now we've got here a new piece of code here. We're using the C register as a counter and we'll setting this to 12 and the reason for this is our sprite is 48 pixels wide but there's four pixels per byte and we're working in bytes here so we need to do 12 bytes per line so we set c to 12 we load in a byte from de and write it to hl we then increase our counter for de and hl remember de is the source sprite and hl is the screen memory we then decrease c and we jump back up to here until c reaches zero so this is the bytes per line we then restore HL again. We use that command to get the next line again, screw the next line. And then we decrease B just like before for each line. So this is the inner loop doing the bytes and this is the outer loop doing the lines. So it's very similar to the last example really. It's just instead of doing this command twice, sort of this was effectively hard coded for two bytes per line. We've now got an extra loop which will allow a little bit more flexibility.
And so that's how we can get a sprite onto the screen. And of course, if we change these, we can get we can alter the position so that we can move it around. So this would be kind of the start of a game where you know your character would be moving. You'd just be changing these values just here. Now, one thing to notice is that this X position is in pixels according to the firmware function. But what is actually returned in HL is done by bytes. So if we change this to 11 and recompile, nothing's changed. If we do 12 and recompile, nothing's changed. 13, same again. And then finally, if we change this to 14, we've moved across by one byte. So effectively, we're ignoring the two bits of the definition here, the exposition here. We're moving in chunks of four because of, that's the byte orientation of the screen. Now, I know that might not be ideal, but this code would be very complicated if we were having to alter this image to allow it to move by one pixel chunks. So in the starting situation of a someone learning assembly, I would strongly suggest you move in byte chunks for your sprites and just write your game in a way that works with that. Chibi Akamas did that and it worked okay. So that's how you can do a simple bitmap. We've kind of looked at that today. Now, if you are feeling adventurous, I would suggest you go and have a look at my website, download the source code, and maybe you want to play around. For example, you could use the function called, the firmware called BD1C here to set the screen mode and change it to screen mode zero. Or you could use BC32 to set the colors. Maybe you could get Chibico into the correct colors for the character here. But anyway, if you want to go ahead and download the source example for today from my website, because as I say, it's intended for you to learn on. If you want to see more, if this is a bit too complicated for you, I've got a Hello World example last time just to get some simple text on the screen. So please have a look at that. And also I've got the Z80 tutorials, in which we really go over all of the basics of Z80 because while I'm trying to go into these with a lot of detail, I'm, I'm assuming you're, you're learning somewhere else or you already know a bit of Z80 because I'm not, I can't explain every single command here. I can only explain how they form together to draw a picture onto the screen. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you have, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing the same kind of example on all of the other Z80 systems that I'm covering in my tutorials. So please follow along for that. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please check out my website. We've got tutorials, source code, and development tools for 6502, 68000, and Z80 systems, and a lot more systems coming in the future. We're going to be covering the 8086 and the ARM and a few other things as well going forwards. And if you've liked this lesson, if you've got questions, comments, or suggestions on how it could be made better, please consider signing up to my forum. It's free, of course, and you can come along here and you can make suggestions, you can ask questions. And if you've got assembly projects you're working on, please let us know what they are. Maybe show off a few screenshots. Tell us what things you've found interesting or what tricks you've come up with, because we'd love to know about it. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.